Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 9 Sunday, July 20th, 2003 Blessed Mother Dear children, walk with the authority of my Son, Jesus Christ. Because you follow him, you must see things through his eyes and respond to situations with his heart. Now, that is different from what you would be doing before you came to follow him, so it is a change. It is something new. When you begin to do something new, you must do it slowly and carefully until you gain confidence in yourself and know that you are doing it well. Move slowly in your service to Christ, dear child, as you must take direction along the way. This direction can only come to you if you are listening to my son as he speaks to you. Dear child, there is really no other way for you. You are a person of goodwill. Therefore, you must walk the worldly paths no longer. We will direct your footsteps, but you must listen. I know you wish to follow our heavenly guidance, and truly, I say to you, we need you to follow our direction now. In order to do that, you must spend time in prayer. Consider prayer as conversation. You would not begin a strange task without instruction, and if you did, you would quite possibly do it incorrectly. Converse with Jesus every day, several times, and you will complete the tasks he chooses for you with perfect purpose. You may then walk away from these tasks knowing that God's will was accomplished. At times, you will see the fruits. At times, you will only be sowing the seeds. The fruits will come later, out of your line of vision. Either way, you have completed your portion and can rest easily. Be at peace now on this day as we direct you in the service to your God. I extend my blessing upon you and offer you God's grace. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 9 Monday, July 21st, 2003 Jesus My children must ready themselves for spiritual warfare. It is prudent to be prepared when a battle looms before you. In this way, a seasoned soldier remains calm in the fray and resists panic, simply using the skills he has been trained to use. The outcome has been secured, dear children. I, your God, will overcome the enemy of light, and my children will be saved. Still, this battle must be fought, and I would have you prepared. How does one prepare, you ask? Of course, you must pray, and pray with discipline, practicing holy indifference. Pay no attention to the why behind my requests. It is enough for you to understand what it is I am asking. A soldier does not always need to be apprised of the bigger picture and understands that in time all will be revealed to him. I am with you. Do not become discouraged when you see the strength of the enemy I am infinitely stronger. 
The situation must come to completion, however, and my children of the light must play their parts. It is for this reason I have placed you where I have placed you, and for this reason I guide you in this way. I am preparing you for the time of battle when you will be given the opportunity to serve me and my kingdom. Be joyful to have been chosen as my servant, for truly the least of my servants is exalted in heaven as a child of the great goodness. My children hear my voice and truly I call out to them now. Hear my call in your heart as together we begin this journey of love. Be consistent. Be always in the habit of asking me to reveal my holy will to you, and I will do so. It is for this reason I cry out to you. I need soldiers willing to serve in obedience. You must cast off the influence of the world and prepare yourself to be obedient to me, your God, who seeks to restore this world to goodness and spiritual safety. Your children will experience the world differently, and for this you can sing praise to your Creator and offer thanksgiving. Prepare yourself now to serve me in love and obedience you will always be glad you chose the side of light. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 9 Monday, July 21st, 2003 Blessed Mother My children, please try to understand what a great grace God has allowed by giving you such loving and specific instruction. Please thank him for these graces, so that we can continue to guide you in this manner. Your mother is with you, and like any mother, watches closely to see if her children are developing as they should. I call out to you a motherly warning now. Turn your face away from the world. Many of our great chosen ones spent their whole lives very much in the world, but not of the world. If you are called to do this, do not begrudge us this work. It is for this reason you have been placed in your current position to be the ears, the eyes, the hands and the heart of Jesus exactly where you are. Indeed, if more people had been doing this consistently, as they were destined to, the world would be a place of great light and comfort. All of God's children would have food and clean water, and would be living lives of comfort and serenity as they developed their souls and prepared to move on into the heavenly realm. Alas! This is not the case, and your God seeks to cleanse the world and restore his light to every corner of the world. This, however, is a process like your evolution to holiness, and like your evolution to holiness, it will not be without a degree of hardship and sacrifice. That is what must occur for the light to be restored in your world. We must be brave, be calm, and be prepared to do our part with the emphasis on service to God and His divine plan. Dear children, you are blessed to have been called, so do not hesitate or hold back anything from Jesus. You must give and give. I am with you 
and will remain with you. And truly, no child is fearful when the child's mother hovers nearby. I bless you and extend my hands over you in protection, marking you as my own. God gives me heavenly authority as the mother of the Savior, and I use this authority to place myself between each one of my children and darkness. I am the woman clothed with the sun, and I bring God's light to this world with all the power of heaven as my weapon. Be at peace, for truly your mother holds before you an impenetrable shield protecting you from the enemy. Think of this, and you will never fear. Call out to me, and I will hear you. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 9 Monday, July 21st, 2003 Blessed Mother My dear children, I wish you to spend time every day considering God's will for you on this day. You must do this in silence. You may have many questions, and it is in silence, in your heart, that we can answer these questions. Otherwise, you do not hear us over the noise of the world. Most of our children do not hear us, despite our attempts to communicate with them. Even many of our chosen ones neglect this form of contemplative prayer. Children, it is in this prayer that you will find the peace and guidance you require. I want others to see Christ in your face. For this to happen, you must be united with Christ. As always, I bless you and extend my hands over you in love. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 9 Tuesday, July 22, 2003 Jesus Today I wish to speak to my souls about the love I desire them to have for their fellow man. My children of the light must think in heavenly terms, as we have said. This means that you should consider your world from my perspective. Within your souls, I cultivate a great love for all of mankind. Do not quash this process. Nurture this love when you feel it, because it is work that comes from me and I am completing it. Feel pity for your brothers and sisters the world over, as I felt pity for the women of Jerusalem. Such suffering you will see when you look at this world from my eyes. There is great hardship, it is true, in the form of sickness and deprivation. But often those souls have their eyes turned to heaven and I am able to console them. Their time in heaven is assured. What is more tragic is the emptiness I see in the more affluent parts of the world. Look into the eyes of your brothers and sisters, dear children. Often you see a flatness, a blankness. Let this move your heart to all manner of compassion, because these souls are unloved. No softness or kindness ignites the divine and they have turned cold. This, dear children, is the real tragedy. A whole generation has been lost to affluence. 
Can you understand why I must respond and remove the affluence that blocks the light for these souls? Truly, you must all be like children, trusting me for everything. When a child is put in his bed to rest at night, the child closes his eyes and thinks of peaceful thoughts related to his mother, father and his day. He does not lie awake, consumed with the desire to acquire more possessions. He does not lie awake, consumed with worry over how to keep the possessions he has already acquired. My souls in the world must be like children, resting in the knowledge that I will care for their needs and provide for them. I will care for you, dear children. You, in turn, care for my needs, which always have to do with souls. I am placing love in your heart. Ask me for more and I will send more. Beg me all during the day to send you love for even the most odious of souls and it shall be yours. In this way, the blankness in the faces of the unloved will dissipate, replaced with a look of joy, the look of a soul who has come to life and once again proceeds on a journey to self-knowledge because he has seen love. I am with you. And if you read my Gospels, you will see that I am asking you to do exactly what I did. You are to become like me. And that is my plan. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 9 Tuesday, July 22nd, 2003 Blessed Mother Let your hearts exult at this perfect and beautiful heavenly plan. Jesus is all goodness, all kindness, and all love. When I say all love, little ones, I mean that his every action, every motivation, every consideration originates in love. He calls to you from love. He guides you from love, and often he corrects you out of love. He sees this world where the flow of love has been disrupted, and because he loves so deeply and perfectly, he suffers. He grieves. Many souls are lost in this dark time, and God has nodded to his angels. Changes are coming. You should pray for these changes and be joyful over them, because they are the will of God, who seeks to rescue his children and restore the world to previous beauty and joy. Can you imagine, dear ones, your world with everyone loving God and loving each other? Can you imagine your world where the chief concern is the movement toward holiness and heaven? All will assist each other with the common goal being the transition that occurs in the soul to ready it for eternity in heaven. Children, this is God's plan. The world was like this once, and now it is time for the world to return to this state of existence. Be happy, because the hand of the Father is guiding these changes, and they are all for the good. Children of the Light, play your part with confidence. If you ask, we will send you a burning desire to see God's will accomplished. 
Pray in this way and we will be pleased. I share this little glimpse of God's plan so that you will not be afraid and focus on fear. That is not what we wish. Focus on your holy duty this day, completed in union with Jesus. I bless you and smile upon you now, as my heart is filled with love and tenderness for you. Be at peace, little soul. Your mother is nearby. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 9 Tuesday July 22, 2003 Blessed Mother Dear children, it is I, your Heavenly Mother, who speaks to you today. Do not fear sacrifice. Many of our chosen souls hold tightly to worldly possessions. It is this last barrier that I seek to penetrate. View material possessions as so many nothings, as I have often said. At times, my little souls, you must see material possessions as something more ominous even than this. You must view them as the baubles of the enemy, with which he seeks to lure you away from the path to Jesus. The less you own, the happier you can be. Do not worry. I will show you what I wish you to have and what I wish you to forego. If you ask me, I will lead you with great care in this matter as it is important. Be filled with joy to be called in this way and together let us remove any barrier that remains between you and my son. I bless you with joy today as I watch your determined efforts to serve your God. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 9 Wednesday, July 23rd, 2003 Jesus These words I bring you are more good news. I want you to share these words as you would share the good news. If you prepare a great banquet filled with the finest of foods, you do not sit down alone to sample and enjoy it. You invite friends and loved ones to share and celebrate together. In the same way, I want you to share my words. I will secure the necessary permissions and then you must obey the promptings I place in your heart. All will be seen to. I require only your obedience. I send these words to call humanity back to the light. I, your God, will move swiftly when the time is right. It is my will that souls be prepared. This is a great mercy of mine, and I would not have humanity treat it lightly. Be assured, dear souls, that I will triumph. My glorious plan is already beginning, and if you ask me, I will remove the blinders from your eyes and awaken your soul from its lassitude with my divine touch. Only ask me. I call you now and wish to draw you with love into my plan. Respond to me with all of your energy and love. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 9 Wednesday, July 23rd, 2003 Blessed Mother Dear children, Jesus sends you these words of guidance and love 
as an act of the greatest mercy. Truly, this is a heavenly gift of tremendous proportion. We will make the best use of it and save countless souls. Be holy, dear little chosen souls. Be brave. I have called you to assist on a mission of mercy and I desire your collaboration. For today, be quiet in the knowledge that our work is about to begin. I bless you and secure every necessary grace for you. When you feel fear, flee to my Immaculate Heart, which will shelter, protect and sustain you. That is all, my child. You have served us well in this endeavor. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 9 Wednesday, July 23rd, 2003 Blessed Mother My dear children, you may be certain that my favor rests upon you. I am witness to your struggles as you attempt to comply with the will of my Son in your life. You live in a time of darkness and this makes it difficult to be different. Throughout the ages, we have called certain souls to advanced or heightened levels of holiness. That is the case now for you, my dear ones. A concentrated effort is necessary to spread the light, light that will come to the world through these words. Be assured that you are on the side of victory, despite the apparent strength of darkness. The time is near for my son to act in such a way that none will doubt his dominion over this world and all humanity inhabiting this world. Many will convert and be saved. We must increase that number through our efforts now. My Son will reveal His will for each of you individually in your hearts. His plan for the world unfolds before you and in the same way, His plan for each of you will also unfold in the silence of your hearts where you must become accustomed to seeking His divine will. Dear children, never be afraid. There is no need. All of heaven stands ready now to do battle for souls. Truly, ask for help and help will come to you. Do not waste these beautiful graces. They are a gift of the most sublime and precious graces available to souls still on earth. I am with you, dear ones. Be happy and hopeful now as heaven calls out to her children. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 9 Thursday, July 24th, 2003 Blessed Mother My children, please welcome the Holy Spirit into your life. You must cultivate this Spirit of God by making your soul an appropriate dwelling place for such goodness. Ask me to intercede for you and I shall. I would like all of my children to pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You will receive these gifts and with them you will serve Jesus. I bless you, dear children. My presence dwells near you always. 